Before we get into today's review, guys, don't forget to like and favorite this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, let's talk about this shoe right here. <laughs> What's up guys, Brandon here from Gearist. Today we're going to be getting down and dirty with the Lone Peak 2.5 from Ultra. For months now, try years, we've been asked by many of you guys to review something, anything, by Ultra. And now it's finally happening. We finally connected with Ultra and got them to send us this pair of the Lone Peak 2.5. And being that this was the first real trial that I would have gotten myself into in Ultra, I've run in them here and there before, but it's never been for like a true wear testing thing. It's been very, very short stuff, like around the block or something like that. This is the first shoe by Ultra that I will have gotten my feet into so needless to say with all the hype that is around this the loyal legion of fans that Ultra has I was very excited to get my feet into these and now it's my turn to share it with you guys it's clear from the outset or in this case the out soul see what I did there that the major influence of Ultra or in this case the Lone Peak 2.5 is the human foot obviously the outside here looks like a foot now this may be largely a marketing thing and I can assure you that it is this particular function really doesn't necessarily necessarily line up with anything specific that the shoe does, but it certainly looks like a foot and that is making me happy anytime that I can see somebody really embracing natural running style, natural running gait or what have you. I'm particularly happy anytime I see somebody trying to build a shoe around a foot rather than trying to shove the foot into the mold of a shoe and that is certainly one of the things that Ultra has done which is clear even from the outset of this shoe. This outsole apart from the obvious nod to the foot is built from Ultra's Sticky Rubber Trail Club law rubber. Well, and it's a full contact outsole, as you can see right here. There are no cutaways for anything, which makes for a really, really great and smooth transition when you're going through the gait cycle. Now let's talk about exactly where the shoe is going to be comfortable relative to the grip and all this kind of stuff. These lugs are about four millimeters deep, as you may be able to see there. I don't have a ruler, so probably not. Four millimeters deep, and these do really, really well on some nicely smoothed out trails, as well as some pretty junked up stuff, as long as it's angular. Now the one place where I felt that this was kind of left wanting was when I was actually on really pretty flat rocks, but flat rocks that were on an angle. What I mean by that is as you approach it, that rock is pretty smooth and you know, at whatever angle it's at, but as long as that angle gets a little bit steep, these don't grip as well. Because number one, on junked up terrain, something that's a little more angular, a little more edgy, these are gonna grip pretty well because there's something for them to stick to. But for some reason, and I'm not exactly sure why, I think it's because these are actually pretty flat, as you can see there. Even though they are multi-directional throughout, they're a little bit flat, and so when you stand on something like that, you slide a little bit. It's not like you slip, you just kind of feel it not really 100% sticking. Not a huge deal, and granted, most rocks you're going to be running on aren't necessarily going to be like that, but that is something that was a pretty consistent kind of left out thing that I noticed here and there. I should also mention that this could easily have something to do with the trails that I was running on, and particularly here in Colorado, these are mostly going to be dry and dusty trails. And on surfaces like that, they don't just things tend to not grip as well. Again, I've run in many trail shoes on terrains like that and they have gripped better than these. So I, I don't really know what it is. And I'm not saying they don't grip well, I'm just saying that they slide a little bit on some of that flatter stuff. As I mentioned earlier, and as you can see right here, Ultra uses the human foot for the majority of its inspiration. To some of you who have not seen an Ultra before, this is going to look like a clown shoe, hence my little song at the beginning there. But to those of you that know Ultra, you know that this is exactly what these shoes are known for. So why am I mentioning this here? in the midsole section of this review, and that's because it starts in the midsole. It actually starts in the outsole a little bit. You can see that shape there, but the midsole is what really carries that into the foot. The first place where that foot-shaped toe box, which is what this is called, really gets into the meat of the shoe is with a top layer of A-bound material, which sits on top of the dual-density midsole material right there. To be honest, I expected this shoe to be a little too soft for my taste. I like my shoes to be pretty firm depending on what they're used for, but I was pleasantly surprised by that. To be honest, honest, I expected this shoe to be a little too soft for my taste. I like my shoes to be pretty firm depending on what they're used for, but I was pleasantly surprised by that. And I have to give a lot of the credit to that A-bound material. Even with 25 millimeters of stack height, this is actually a pretty firm and resilient shoe. I would not call it firm. You can still definitely feel a lot of cushioning underfoot, but it's a really nice feeling and gives you quite a bit of responsiveness. Another thing I was pleasantly surprised by, especially since there are no visible flex screws on the outsole or the midsole, is the flexibility of this shoe, which you can see 
is actually really very nice. It doesn't bend right here through the mid step or the mid foot, which you can see this little band right there. That guy's a little bit of rigidity that's added and that's going to keep it a little bit more rigid, but it's really, really quite flexible and I really like that. Probably my favorite part of the midsole of the shoe is the full length stone guard rock plate, which goes front to back in this guy. Now, while you might think that that would deaden ground feel a little bit, especially with a little bit of cushioning, it doesn't. This does a really nice job in just protecting you from the super jagged stuff you still have a great sense of the ground which I enjoyed and to be quite honest expected from a shoe like this moving on to the upper in reading some things about the Lone Peak 2.0 one of the things they seem to have issues with was the durability of the upper material and in this based on my experience thus far with about 35 40 miles on this they seem to have worked out the kinks with that now again I know some of you may have the question well how can we know what kind of durability a shoe is going to have after 35 or 40 miles and the simple answer is we have to extrapolate that data based on the rockiness and ruggedness of the trails that we take these out on. We simply don't have the time to test each shoe to two or 300 miles. There's just no time with the amount of shoes we have here at Gearist. Moving on. The mesh of the upper is quick dry trail mesh by Ultra. You can see here and there's a, just not a ton of strapping, not a ton of support. Where the support takes place is right here. You've got this pretty solid toe bumper up front here, which is nice. It's flexible, but it does protect the shoe and the foot. What you've also got then as you get toward the back two thirds of the shoe, this little mountain guy right here, these are actually some bonded overlays, which are going to increase the amount of durability and the amount of kind of just shape of the foot, the structure of the upper as your shoe moves moves or as your foot rather moves around inside of it. One thing that is definitely a hardcore piece of support structure is this strap right here, which you can see going all the way around the back. This is a stitched on overlay, which Ultra has chosen to use to reinforce that heel counter. And again, make you feel nice and locked down in the rear of the foot. Moving into the rear of the upper, there's a bit of foam back here. I could, they could probably stand to lose a little bit of the foam or at least make it more dense and slim down. This might make it easy for somebody to kind of cinch it down a little more, add some more flexibility in the rear foot and the heel counter. Now, I have a very average foot and my foot fit well in here and I felt good and all that stuff. However, if you've got a lower volume foot, in other words, a more narrow foot or just simply overall smaller foot, you might have a little bit of problems cinching down because this is flexible up here, but then as you get down here, it, it's not going to be able to come in on the foot quite as well. Uh, and if you get it to, that's awesome, but you're probably gonna have to cinch down really far to make that happen. The last thing I'll point out in the upper of this shoe is this guy right here. This is the gator trap, which is meant for straight strapless gaiters. In other words, they're going to come up here, basically attach up front and then be able to lock down on the back. I like this. It seems like a bit of a random thing. Um, I don't know how many people have actually run with gaiters in these. When looking online, I've only found a couple people actually using the gaiter strap. That's not to say that a ton of people don't use it, but I just, I don't have any strapless gaiters. I have strapped gaiters that are knee high and for snow, but Hey, if you got them, use them. You got a little setup right there for it. And now let's talk about the fit. Now, I mentioned this a second ago, and I have a very average foot. I never think of a men's D width to either constrict me or be too swimmy or anything like that. Of course, with all shoes, there's a range of what this dictates, but in this shoe, because of this toe, this foot shaped toe box up here that we've mentioned a couple times now, I was curious to see exactly how that was going to translate over to the general fit of the shoe. I should also mention that, as is probably pretty obvious, this is a very favorite shoe of a lot of people that have wider or higher volume feet. There's a ton of room to cinch down on these laces with the gusseted tongue inside here. You can really pretty get them pretty wide and actually cinch them down quite a bit. So again, a lower volume foot isn't necessarily going to have trouble, but it might. And that toe box right here, this foot shaped toe box, I love the way that my foot is able to function there. Tons of wiggle, tons of splay for the toes. It's just really nice in terms of letting your foot do what it wants. Now moving back to the overall fit of the shoe, once I got the lacing dialed in and all that stuff, I was pretty comfortable. But on some off camber stuff, I did did notice myself being right on that edge of feeling like I was going to be slipping a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's super swimmy or anything, but I did have maybe more room than I would have liked in there. Now, maybe that's because I didn't lace them down far enough, or maybe that's because the sizing feels off on this. And this is my next point. This is an 11. I wear an 11 in everything. And that doesn't mean that there are not shoes in our arsenal that we've tried. You can go back and certainly look at some less Sportiva shoes, for instance, where I have gone up a half size in some cases, even a full size in other cases. In this size 11, I feel like it's too big. It wears about at least a half size large for me, and that's fine. I wish I'd gotten a 10 and a half at the end of the day, but I went with standard sizing because 
That's what you guys want to know about. So if you're getting this, you should likely, likely size down about a half size. What would be best is if you buy two pairs of 10 and a half and 11 if you're me, and then just try on both of those and send back the one that doesn't fit. You'll know pretty quickly because you should have about a thumb's width between the end of your longest toe and the end of the shoe. And I had way more than that. So uh, definitely think about going down a half size when buying these. Now the ride of the shoe is something that I was pleasantly surprised by. The Lone Peak 2.0, as I mentioned earlier, had some issues, but mostly those were with durability. But one thing they also changed in this version is they firmed up the midsole and it actually results in a more firm and responsive shoe with more resilience. Even on longer runs, I did a run that was I think 1700 feet of climbing over the course of about 10 miles. And I felt really solid the whole time, even late in the run when I expected the material to kind of get worn down and hot and all that stuff. It, it really impressed me quite a bit. This is not the lightest shoe out there with my size 11s right here coming in at 11.7 ounces, but it doesn't really feel like a super lead weight or anything on the bottom of your foot either. One thing with regard to the ride that kind of stood out for me is that while I really enjoyed the ride of the midsole and the outsole and everything like that, the upper doesn't quite keep up in terms of fit with the rest of the shoe. It, it is that just touch swimmy for me. It's not super swimmy. It's not like a big clunky clown shoe like I alluded to at the beginning, just making a joke there, but it is a little bit swimmy. I would like to see this cinch down more. What would be really cool actually is if this were more of an elastic material, something like we've seen in the Zante, for instance, something that's going to be able to fit your foot or more of a booty construction inside that's going to lock down the foot a little bit better without being overly tightening. With this being my first pair of ultras that we've done a full on review on here at Gears, I can definitely see what a lot of people are talking about, especially people that have a wider foot or really want to allow that foot to get in there and just be a foot. While there are those fit considerations that I mentioned, whether your foot is a low volume, high volume, or average, it's definitely worth trying on, seeing if it works for you, especially if you've had a hard time finding a shoe that fits the forefoot of your foot just right. Now at $120, this is decent among its peers. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it's well priced for what it is. And it's a pretty durable shoe overall with no real signs of wear after 35, 40 miles on the outsole or the upper, which again in the low peak 2.0 had some fit and durability questions. My question for you guys today is what ultra shoes have you tried and what did you think of them? Let us know down in the comments section below. Guys, once again, don't forget to like and favorite this video and please subscribe to our channel. You can do so by clicking that YouTube button right over there in the corner or just follow us on any of our social media outlets and you can get those updates all the time. The more subscribers we have, the more cool stuff we're able to do here at Gear. So thank you guys so much for supporting us. If you've got any questions about this or any of our reviews or any of our other videos for that matter, please don't hesitate to email info at gears.com or just click right here. Go to gears.com and click that contact us button. You can also leave a comment down in the comment section below. Once again, you guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.